Hello and welcome to the Petty Paisley Podcast, episode number 44. I am your host, Daniel McIver, as usual. We're in for a different episode today. It's not the usual one where we just kind of speak about the last week because there's been nothing to speak about with Hearts. However, it's a big season review after we did the season preview. Uh, right at the start, I am, as ever, joined by Adam Kennedy. Adam, how are you doing? I'm very well, thank you, mate. Yeah, pleased that uh, Hart and Midlothian have not ruined my weekend for once, as you'll obviously be in that same boat, but what about yourself? I'm all right, I'm all right. I've been focusing more on the election this week, so because I'm that politics person and it's depressing as anything. However, it's not just us here. Much like we had the season preview, Adam's absolutely delighted by this news, uh, we are joined by one of our few returning guests, it is Mr. Cameron Connor. Cammy, how are you doing? I'm very well, boys. Thank you for having me back on. No worries. How have you been down in Sunderland? It's just been it's been busy. And you know what? It feels like a, a lifetime ago that we did this season preview. Um, so it's obviously nice to get back on to discuss the interesting season we've just had. Absolutely. Interesting is definitely one word for it. Um, so this show is going to take somewhat of a structural approach, but... If you've listened to the show before, you know that we'll just kind of do random stuff as well. Uh, so we're going to start by getting kind of general summations, feelings and reviews of the season as a whole before we go into more specifics of it. So I will start with you, Cami, because obviously me and Adam have been on here every single week for 27 game weeks speaking about our beloved Heart of Midlothian. And However, you've not only been... Uh, not having this platform, but you've been down in Sunderland in a season that that hasn't actually really affected getting to see games because we've been able to watch all the games virtually. How have you felt this season has went? I know it's a very loaded question, but try your hardest to summarise <laughs> I'll it. break it down into bits, shall we? Yeah. Um, first of all, it was obviously really strange as well because I am literally now a stone's throw away from the Stadium of Light. You know, walking past the ground, I'm like, oh, I miss it so much. And I uh, obviously link the games up to, to my telly whenever their hearts were playing and watch them. And no matter who's in my room, I'm going, oh, that's where I sit. <laughs> and every game, without fail, boys, every single game, I'm like, oh, I miss it. But no, I think the, the first thing I will say is obviously at least we're promoted. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, that was the, the major kind of, you know, that is what we're going to be doing this season. And it wouldn't be hardest if it wasn't the difficult way. Mm-hmm. Let's be brutally honest with that quite early on, but you look at the the season, there's been highs, there's been lows, there's been lower lows. Um, and I'm not just talking about the Scottish Cup. The lowest <laughs> low. Yeah, lowest low. Uh, but obviously, like you can say what you want about the season, but we are back where we belong next season. I think that's uh, the, the thing to, to spin out to. Absolutely. That's quite a positive way to end it. Adam, I have a feeling you're not going to be as positive. So what is your summary of this season? No, I'm actually starting to believe that Cammy's looked at your notes. Um, I know, I know. I, I mean, we've achieved the bare minimum. <laughs> Sweet. Um, <laughs> you know my thoughts by now. Um, 27 matches in Scotland's second tier isn't going to make up for two embarrassing cup, cup exits. So the majority of it's been all right, adequate. Um, but if I were to sum it up in, in a word, I would probably use underwhelming. That's, I think that's kind of the word that everybody's using because I can only really echo what you guys have said. Um, I have always this season tried to be the more positive one out of us two slash three whenever we've had a guest. Um, I think Thomas Nicol beat me to positivity. (laughs) But there's been some absolutely indefensible performances, most notably, obviously, the games that we will get into, the cup games, but in the league as well. However, also, there has been some positives in terms of individual performances throughout the season as a whole. Uh, And... I think a lot of it's been marred by the general fact that we can't get into stadiums, that we can't express our voices in the actual park, in the pubs afterwards and stuff like that. So it makes it harder to get a kind of consensus when there's not just immediate anger on social media 
after a game such as Brewer Rangers. However, before we get into more specifics of the season, as I said at the start, Cami joined us right before the start of the season and we made some predictions. Now. Oh, God. Yeah, Adam's saying oh, God, there because if you have either listened to that recently or remember that, Adam, would you surmise yourself as being the most confident out of the three of us? I am... Um... I don't know whether confidence is the right word. Maybe arrogant. Okay. Maybe deluded. <laughs> um, <laughs> not realizing how pish we actually are. Um, sort of. I don't know. I, I mean, it's funny, isn't it? How <laughs> throughout the season you've kind of been the more positive one. Yet, probably looking at the season from the start, I was going all guns blazing and just thinking we're going to absolutely we're going to piss this. This will be fine. Um, we just about did. And <laughs> yeah. and uh, it's safe to say that HMS Pistol League was not boarded once. So, yeah, it's, it's been a laugh, hasn't it? So, Cami, on the other hand, was probably, now that we'll look at this, is almost spot on with a lot of his predictions. However, at the time, certain individuals... At. Yeah, that, I was going to try and put it in a nice way. But you got laughed at by myself, Adam, and certain people. How are you feeling as we sit here about to go over them? Well, first of all, I think the point I will make is get it up, (laughs) Jules. But I didn't want to be right. (laughs) That's the thing. I'm delighted I'm right because I'm never very often right. Was it a safety net thing, mate? You have seen Hearts play, eh? (laughs) Yeah. Why, come on, eh? (laughs) Um, I, I don't know. I mean... If I'm being honest, I still believe very, very strongly that a lot of people underestimate the championship. And I know we're going to speak about it. I think a few of those players on that team underestimate the championship. That's, I think that's fair that's to That's interesting, say. isn't it, Daniel? Yeah, it is interesting. We'll get into my thoughts on the championship in a wee bit, but we will start with the prediction. So we had five categories. We had player of the season, top goal scorer, breakout player, the amount of losses we expected, and the final points total at the end of the season. So we will start with the player of the season. Now, Cami, do you remember who you said? Um, No. So I think it was either, was it not? I'm going to go right, okay, I'll, I'm going to... Be really honest here. If I'm going to go with three players and tell me if I've got one right, one was Craig Gordon. No. One was Michael Smith. Right. And one was Liam Boyce. So your player of the season at the start of the season was Michael Smith. How would you say he has done this season overall? Overall, I think he's been fairly solid, but I don't think we've seen him at his best. I think he's played it really safe this season. Interesting. How so? He seems very defensively minded. It's it, recent games anyway, it's like he doesn't want to pass forward. Mm-hmm. You know, he's always kind of turned around and played it back to, to Halkett or, or Suter or even Big Pop, as I was delighted to get his nickname back in. Mm-hmm. Um, Is that a gaffer's I, instruction then for you? It's got I to hope be, not. It? I hope not, but yeah, I think it probably is, but I just don't think he's really got out of second gear. There's games where in the Premier League, he absolutely wiped the floor with players and teams. And it's now kind of like he's just there to to fill the kind of area he's playing in. That's interesting because I would generally agree. I think he hasn't really gotten out of second gear. But do you think there's an element that he hasn't had to? I think possibly. And I think it comes back to did he maybe... Let, let's be honest, first of all there, sorry. So Hart should never have been in this championship. We'll place that on record. I think that's something that all three of us agree with. Mm-hmm. And I think he's maybe at that point where he's like, Hart shouldn't be in the championship, so I'm not going to get out of the second gear. That's that's an interesting way of looking at it because I think, and as we'll go through later with the squad, I think a lot of players potentially have felt like that. However, I would say Michael Smith as a kind of general player of your prediction, while it may didn't fully culminate, I think he has been one of the strongest players consistently this season. Uh, my prediction was Liam Boyce. Uh, Boyce, as you said, one of the players that you potentially thought. Um, 
I personally think he is our player of the season. The debate will be between him and Craig Gordon. And I think that is a fair debate. Like I know a lot of people are saying that's not fair either way. Some people are going, the only player who deserves it is Craig Gordon. Other people are going, the only player who deserves it is Liam Boyce. But what we can all agree with is that they are the only two players that could be up for it. Um, Adam, obviously you made it, it was very well documented that at the start of the season, you weren't Liam Boyce's biggest fan, but that was purely just out of frustration. Whereas I was kind of saying, no, look, he's doing this, he's doing that, he's doing that. And now at the end of the season, in the last episode that we did, you were the one who was going, you were frustrated by people's reaction to him that he hasn't done enough. So how do you see how his season's been? Um, <laughs> this is just going to be a recurrent theme of this episode, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> just, just digging me up. Um, listen, I, I, I mean, I've, I've said it on here numerous times, I think. With Liam Boyce, I was expecting the the kind of out and out goal scorer that we saw at Ross County. Um, I didn't realise quite the extent to which his game had developed, perhaps down south. Um, and to be honest, I, I think both your sort of shouts for a player of the season, um, I think, are both you know valid contenders. I don't think Michael Smith's at that same tier as kind of Craig Gordon and Liam Boyce, but he's probably in the one below it, just below it. Um, but yeah, I mean, I, I, delighted that Liam Boyce could could shut me up. But at least that's in a in a positive sense. Absolutely, Cami. How have you felt Boyce's bit? Has he lived up to the heights that you thought he would, or have you thought, yeah, this is exactly what I expected of Liam Boyce at Championship level? I still think there's more to come from him, mm-hmm. uh, depending on what obviously happens with yet another rebuild or whatever may happen. Mm-hmm. Um, I think. He's been there when he needed to be there. Mm-hmm. You know, the one thing that I think is really important to get out there, and I'll probably get slated on social media for saying this, but we move. He's still not that kind of like he can, he can never be that one team army. Mm-hmm. He does need other players around him to to play well. You know, there was a game I can't remember who he played against, but his first touch was like the worst thing I've ever seen. Mm-hmm. And he could not bring a ball under control. And, you know, I think that changed when the players around him are playing well because I think it fills him with, yeah, we need to go and do something. You know, I think you you look at teams, especially the Hearts this year, that if there's so many underperforming, it might be a case of everybody then underperforms. But, you know, usually you get a team where some, at least one person's performing. I think he's been good. I think he got, obviously the goals he scored have been good. He links up well with Gary McKay Stephen now that he's started obviously coming a bit form, but I still think he's missing a little bit. But I'm hoping that'll come next season. It'll be depending on who we keep in the style we, we obviously intend to play next season. I think well, I think that we've got to remember as well is the fact that we've not really had a pre season or it's been, you know, yeah. stop start. I think this has been a massive thing for you know, no, I'm not just saying hearts have been affected. I think it's been a, a sort of nationwide issue. Um, and there's bound to be, you know, a good few hearts players in that squad that have suffered from that sort of not being the case. Absolutely. However, generally, I'd say, as I said, Michael Smith hasn't been quite at the level many expect him to be, but in with a shout one of the best players. Liam Boyce has been arguably the player of the season, if not the other one. We now come to Adam's prediction for player of the season. Uh, Adam, do you remember who you said? Regrettably, yes. And uh, could you tell the lovely It's listeners? a shame this is a podcast, by the way, because that picture was phenomenal. Yeah, Adam has had head in his hands whenever we've spoken <laughs> about this. Um, but uh, could you tell everybody who you uh, <clears throat> said is your player of the season? I believe it was Hart Midlothian's number seven, Jamie Walker. It was indeed. Uh, I mean, let's be honest. I've made my thoughts about Jimmy Walker explicitly clear this season. However, Adam, I'd like to ask, do you think he is in the conversation for player of the season this year? Um, I think had he been given more starts under Robbie, he might have been. Right, right. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, I'll let Cami answer that first. How do you agree with that? You're going to hate me, Dan, but I do agree because I think if he'd carried on the form that he has been when he's been coming off the bench, do you know who the performances reminded me of a wee bit this season of Jamie? Is Nova Kovas. Interesting. You brought him off the bench and he just did something. You know, obviously it was the odd occasion he didn't, but 
it was I I maybe a little out. bit. Of, yes, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that kind of moment there. Do you know, and like like kind of Boise at times, he just appeared in the right moment. You know, and it it really kind of sparked him. Yes, I think he should have maybe had more starts. And there was a few times this season where like ninety five percent of the fan base, the team selection would come out and you'd be like, eh? Like, it would just be that instant one. Wait, sorry, what? But, you know, I think it'd be interesting to see what happens next season. And I know that's going to be a common theme of this, this show. What will happen next season? But I think he's been decent, is probably the way I would describe it. So, listen, this is, folk are going to get sick of this. I think he's nowhere been, he's been, I can't even talk because I've been trying, I've been saying this for 27 weeks. I don't agree personally that his form would have increased or improved or maintained with more starts because I think now at the stage he's at in his career, he is only a bench player. I don't think whenever Jamie Walker has started, he has shown anything. I don't genuinely, like, I can't think of a game, apart from maybe more in a way, the 2-0 game, where he started with that and obviously he scored both goals. I can't really think of another game or even a couple of games where Walker has started and been one of our best players. I, I If you were just to ask me, Walker off the bench, he arguably could be in play of the season contention because he's just been so effective off the bench. But generally, when I, I think um, Adam said this last week, actually, at the start of the season when you went, we're playing in the league that he came through in and was fantastic. He's back at the club that he did it at. He's back with a manager that he did it with and got brought through. I think it's fair to say a lot of people expected far more than we've actually had from him. Or, I'll go to you, Cammy. do you think I'm being too harsh or do you think that's fair? No, I'd, I'd agree to a certain extent. Um, if you look at him coming back and what he wanted to achieve, but then again, I think he has been useful when he's come off the bench and been onto something, but... You could also argue that Andy Howard is in the same boat, that he's coming to Hearts. You know, everyone was like, what a player. I'm still waiting. Mm-hmm. Yes, absolutely. Well, we will get, we will absolutely get to Andy Howard later. But Adam, go. No, I, I was going to say, I mean, I, I sort of talked about how I thought that all the stars were kind of aligning, as you touched on there, Daniel. Do you think he's sort of in that same kind of, that same kind of camp as Michael Smith, where there's perhaps something mentally that's not sort of preventing him from kicking on? And it's perhaps that he just feels as though he's, I don't want to say that he's better than this, but do you know what I mean? That There might just come that that little bit of arrogance, but without sort of, Yeah, and without any justification, mate. I think that's almost spot on. And Michael Smith did that, but still kind of at least consistently performed. I, I, obviously, not including the February-March period where just everybody was terrible, but it was very noticeable that Smith seemed off it as well but Smith managed to kind of just keep going and go back to Mr Consistency and when you look over the season he probably still was that like six or a seven most weeks if uh, again apart from that wee period but Walker again we'll get to him in a wee bit however generally you would not I, I feel like Adam you would not put him up for player this season that's a fair comment I, I can't I can't disagree <laughs> with that mate well, we move on to the next category, which is going to be the quickest category that we speak about because it was the one category we all agreed in. It was top goal scorer, Liam Boyce. We all said that. There's not really much for us to say just now. We will, again, speak about Liam Boyce later, so I'll get more of your opinions later. However, we then move on to breakout well, players. Sorry, mate, because oh, I was going to say, what is interesting is what would have happened had we brought Nando in at the start of the season as opposed to... Mm-hmm. In January, you know, then there's perhaps a debate. I know I can see Cammy shaking his head, but it's it's a it's a topic for conversation, surely, Cammy. No, I think it is a topic for conversation, but I still believe that he's not of Boyce's caliber, though, is he? I also don't think he's that. However, many goals a season striker, if I'm honest, mm-hmm. I genuinely think he. So, if you're playing like, I'm not saying I'm Robin Nielsen here, right? But go with me. If you're playing something like a 4 4 1 1, I think he's the, the player you play in the 10 because he just seems he wins every ball. He's like Uche or kind of somebody of that kind of 
stature, should I say. Countless heart centre forwards that just, we've seen that can't score. Today. What was it? Just just big unit, I think I'll just describe <laughs> yeah. him as, right? Like, honestly, he's like a big kitchen cabinet. You just can't move him. But he's so useful in that sense to flick the ball into Boise. And I think he's he's obviously powerful and he's strong and he has obviously scored a few goals this season. He has been good. But I don't think he's that goal scorer compared to Boyce. But I think that's good though because you don't want two similar players being up top together. Absolutely. Yeah. And that actually quite nicely leads into our breakout player because this is another kind of category that me and Kami actually agreed on. We picked the same individual. We both, Kami, picked Craig Whiten to be our breakout player. Now, I think there is a debate that Craig Whiten was a breakout player for us this season, considering the years that he'd been at us prior, he'd never done anything. And the, when Robert Borthwick was on this podcast, we were laughing about how how is he still at the club? Like, surely he'll be away. And then he had that game against Wraith in the Cup where he got his hat-trick with the two penalties and one of the goals of the season where he just ran 80 yards. Then he just kind of kept finding form. He came off the bench against Ayr and scored twice and got an assist to make us go 5-3 up. And then, of course, kind of the pinnacle of his Hearts career, he gets that goal in the semi-final against Tebbs. But on the flip side, there was many games, I will give him credit, where he was played completely out of position, most notably as a winger, um, where he was lost, he just didn't seem to do anything. And then, of course, in January, he has moved to Dunfermline alone, that is going to be a permanent fixture. Kami, would you say that Craig Whiten is or has been our breakout player? Yeah, and I think the reason behind that is every player is going to have bad games, especially obviously the, the season we've had, but I think so much confidence came back to Whitey. Mm-hmm. Either that or it was his haircut, it was on the two. But I think, uh, I'm going to say this on record, and again, I will probably get slated on social media. I'm surprised with what I'm going. Yeah. Um, I, I know I mentioned in the first the podcast I came on before, boys, that one of my families is an Unfermline fan. Mm-hmm. When he signed on loan, he was delighted, and when he found out it was permanent, he was, he was buzzing. And I, I genuinely, he actually reminds me a bit of James Keatings. Mm-hmm. is rather good in the championship, but can he step up? I mean, listen, I'm not going to sit and slate Keatsy because I've killed him for the bill with Keatsy, right? But it's that kind of interesting transition that would they have maybe been at the same kind of level in, in the Premier League? I don't know. But again, I think he's another type of player that, like you said, that he's, he's played out of position. So I don't think you can really give him much stick mm-hmm. you know I'm a goalkeeper by trade somehow but it's like sticking me up top and just going just go for it mate I all right what we go there yeah I'll go up and catch the body ball he's I, a tight think... workhorse isn't he and that's, yeah, that's, probably why, that's probably why he's been so successful in, in sort of I don't want to say so successful in other positions but you know what I mean he's he's done he's put a shift he puts in, a graft on yeah aye um I, I I can't disagree with with either of you sort of regarding him as as a, a break breakout player because I don't think there's any other real contenders if we're honest. Um and I totally echo Cammy's uh Cammy's thoughts as well that my pars pals absolutely love him and he's probably turned into one of if not their best player. Um so be interested to see what will happen. I think he'll probably get a, a full campaign as sort of Dunfermline's first choice centre forward. Um and if they can build around them, then they've got every chance of getting out this league just as we have. Well, we then, again, just continuing Adam's uh, run of predictions here. You yourself have just said there that you don't think there's anybody else that could be in contention. Uh, A player that is definitely not in contention, considering he didn't play a single minute for us, whether it be in the league or cup competitions, was uh, your prediction, Adam, of Chris Hamilton. Tell me he's worse than Mihai Popescu. <laughs> I can't. I can't. I've never even there. seen Chris Hamilton that... play and he's not worse than Popescu. Or Berra. Some of these numpties that we've had at centre-half. You know, can a young lad do any worse than any of them? Well, obviously, Chris Hamilton... So, so be absent for the vast majority of the season. You're making good points in fairness. I mean, seriously. He's clutching at Strasse, isn't he? 
Yeah, he is. Um, so no, but, 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 why, but why, why, why is he not given a chance? It's the same with the whole Cammy Logan debate. Well, you know, why? I've got I, an opinion on that, though. I, I, but I can even recall saying on that pod, you know, it, it all depends on how quickly we get the league wrapped up because then we can bleed in some youth. And we've not even done that. That's aged well, hasn't it? That podcast must just like, be a relic of the past in like, all fashions. But I've got a point back then. I've been crying out yeah. for young players to get a chance all season. Absolutely. Cammy, what's your point on Cammy Logan? Didn't see the point in withdrawing him and recalling him when he was in a consistently good co-rangers team. Yeah, I agree. I very, because very much agree. why, and I'm pretty sure it was Barry Anderson, tweeted, why bring him out of a, a team environment where things are going really well and put him in a pish, low, like kind of low confidence team in Hearts because that's one way to ruin the momentum it gathered. And I totally agree. Regards to Chris like Hamilton, thing. even still, I think being involved at that level is, you know, that's a good I think it's thing. Cover him with a shout of coming up from League One, aren't they? So yeah, it's kind of the same situation that's been argued when the Ross Stewart news was announced, and everybody went, "Well, what about Harry Stone?" Even though it's better to have Harry Stone go out than play a couple of games for us than and sit on the bench, but then actually get that experience at a lower league club. One hundred percent. And I think if we're looking at it, I don't think if I think if we are loaning to the lower leagues, I don't want them going to full time teams. I'd much rather they were a, a, a part-time team where, you know, maybe maybe in Harry Stone's case, it's a lower-end sort of League 2 team. So then he's going to be busy and he gets, you know, he, he really comes on and develops. Um, I guess you could also probably say the same for the centre-halves. And then we're offensively, maybe it, maybe it is sort of pushing for a place in a, in a higher-end sort of promotion-chasing team in either of these leagues. So we, I think we need to be more careful with loan destinations as well. Mm-hmm. I think sorry just briefly going back to Greg White and I've got a point to make on Harry yeah, Jones well I believe if Dunfermline hadn't ha- hadn't have had that little blip Whiten's goals could have come back to bite us yeah absolutely yeah, that's a fair absolutely. comment 100% could have come back to bite us in regards to Harry Stone again agree with both you boys a lot of people go why is Ross Stewart signing why is this we've got Harry Stone listen Harry is a top class goalkeeper for his age. Like there was a video on social media, uh, unreal. Like, and I mean, unreal. Some of these saves. But what is the point in having him as a number two? Yes, he'll probably be playing development league twenties or reserve. Sorry, if it's back on next season. But what is the point? You know, Craig Gordon's already said in interviews. You know that he's he's forever speaking to Harry. And I'm pretty sure Harry's still training my hearts. Mm-hmm. even though he was a well loan because of the, the structure-wise. But what is the point in having a player sit on the bench? Yeah, he's playing reserves. Yeah, he's doing this. But if he's going out and getting game time, like you say, that kind of a club that, you know, will make a player better, then do it. It's the same with Chrissy Hamilton. Chrissy's a, a good defender. He really is. And, you know, there's a lot of boys. I mean, I think we signed, was it four boys during the week on full-time contracts? Yes, yeah, yeah. Four or five of them. And I know we'll come to probably a few of the youngsters that maybe should be staying and aren't. But what is the point in having them in that squad? Don't get me wrong, training alongside Craig Gordon, Nasey, Boise, whoever, must be phenomenal for a, a young player. But if you're just turning up to training, training with these boys, brilliant, but then just not doing anything in regards to kind of getting solid game time, What's the point? Because it's just going to hinder development. Ha- has to be part-time teams for me in that respect, mate. I totally agree. Yeah. Well, we then move on to the first category where there is no debate. One of us got something right. There is no... You can't argue as to whether or not. So it is the amount of losses that at the start of this season we expected. Now, I will go from the most amount of losses that was predicted to the least... And this is where, <laughs> yeah, for I, once, for once, you've not checked me first. I know it. So, we're going to start straight away with the first prediction we've got right perfectly is Cami, who predicted exactly four losses, and we have finished the campaign with four losses. And I got laughed at. He did. 
You definitely Quite severely. Did. I got abuse on social media about this never end. And quite um, rightly so. You've said yourself it was a pish campaign. Well, that's that's what I was going to ask you. Obviously, you got it right. At the time that you said that, was that you saying that's the most you'll accept? Or were you saying you actually think with this current crop of players, we will have four losses? I, you don't want to lose any games. Yeah. I, of course you don't, right? You, you want to win every game. But I said there would be losses. I said there'd be slip-ups. I didn't want to be right. And by the way, it's the first time I've been right all week, right? But I didn't want to be right in that regard. Going back to the first show that we did, you look at this team, you still look at this bloody squad, right? And you're like, how have we lost four games? Yeah, that is... Because we're mate. It's as simple as. <laughs> <laughs> well, I predicted three losses. So I was only one off. Quite chuffed with that. I was kind of, I think in my head, I would have been thinking, we'll probably lose once against Dundee, Dunfermline and Inverness. They were not the teams that uh, we just lost to. Obviously, we lost to two of them, (laughs) but we then also lost to far worse teams. However, we finally come to Adam's prediction, who in 27 games, and I think the quote is, I'll be happy with two, which kind of means... You only really accept two losses. Adam predicted two. We got double that amount of losses. Adam, talk to me. Um, or don't, depending on how you feel. Yeah, or dead. No, no, I mean, I, I, I wouldn't have mind losing, or I wouldn't have minded losing to Dunfermline, which was our first loss, mm-hmm. and maybe Inverness. Not happy with losing to Dundee. Really not happy with losing to Dundee. I'm particularly not happy with the two home defeats. Yeah. The Wraith Rovers and the newly promoted Wraith Rovers, I might add, and Queen of the South, who only just managed to stay up in the championship due to Parthic Thistle having played less games and the season being curtailed, which was entirely out of their control. So here's a question for you though. They could have been in League One. Here's a question. Uh-huh. How do you feel about that? I know what you're gonna uh, listen, I am kind of just doing this to wind you up a wee bit. How do you feel about that Wraith loss now that they have had such a good campaign? You don't care. She's did nothing. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you want me to say? Oh, yeah, John McLean's an absolute managerial mastermind. He's going to win manager of the year. What? Are we talking championship manager of the year? Yeah, or just yeah. Sco- oh, I was Not say, Scottish manager. I was, I, I was thinking, whoa, hold on a minute. <laughs> let's, just, let's just calm that right down. Um, no. no, listen, I mean, the, the Livingston-esque fairy tale's on. I mean, yes. they've, they've now got the better of Dunfermline. I'm actually kind of wanting them to get the better of Dundee. I think Dundee will come up. Mm-hmm. I've, I'm throwing that out there, but I, I kind of want them to get the better of Dundee because I, I just can't stand Dundee, basically. That's, that's pretty fair, to be honest. Um, we then, as a result, move on to the final kind of category, which was points totals. Again, Cami got closest because he predicted that we would get 63 points. What do we end up on 57? So he's six out. Yes, yeah, six out. How do you feel? It's not about bad. That, Come on, we could have dropped two more wins or something. <laughs> nah. Um, those those two home defeats, I'm telling you. Yeah. Hey. Right? Yeah. I uh, I would love do you know what I'd love to know what Robbie's points total that he said the team was? Because if you notice, whenever somebody's mentioned that, it's like, oh, we met it. He says 57. I'm not buying that. Not a hope in hell's chance that he conveniently set. The point is, no, wait, we got into this last week. It's conveniently not conveniently, it is. It's Come mathematically on. that oh is. My. So, if you, are you buying that? I, but again, as I said last week, it's not a thing whether you buy what you can buy is if Robbie set that target. But the target of 57 points is enough to win the league, regardless. That, that's not what I'm disputing. I'm disputing whether you legitimately believe he has set that target. I just I just look at I think that's and, a minimum target, yeah. I think that the Friday night Wraith Rovers fixture, somebody's gone on the Monday, oh, well, do you know what? We've played three quarters of a season, and if you claim that 76 points is enough to win the league, let's just take three quarters of that to get your magic 57 points. I, I think because at the start of the season, he was quoted saying... 
and I've got this quote, saying, uh, we've just sat down with everybody in the back room and the players and we've set our targets based on what a full season would be and uh, marked it down. That, as a result, means that we are taking points that would be three quarters of the way through and matched it to what we expect. So right. I okay. think... So we are doing minimum. quite literally the bare minimum. Like yeah, a, that, yeah the that's a thing. Start. Yeah, that's, that's what you can get annoyed at and justifiably. But I do think the minimum expectation of this okay. season was 57 points. Cammy, how do you feel about it? Do you see what you started, Cammy? Thanks for that. <laughs> Sorry, mate. I just come on to here to start the pot boys. You know this. Um, no, I think... Listen, we said at the top of the programme that promotion was the first thing and the only thing that kind of should have been successfully done. Obviously, we've had two absolute cup shambles, but... Do you know what? Can I be honest, right? And this is, again, I'm going to be absolutely rinsed on social. I hope I don't lose followers from us. Just, just tread very carefully, mate. Right. I don't care what points we finish on as long as we, we got promoted. That's yeah. the thing, right? Yes, mm-hmm. we have been pish. And that's me being nice and semi radio friendly. But we did what was required. Regardless. I mean, yeah, we should not have had, we shouldn't have had four losses. We shouldn't have had how many draws, but bloody hard, right? Six but, draws we ended up. We right. ended up the season seventeen wins, six draws, and four losses. And that shouldn't have happened, you know, because we should be better. I'm not saying we should win every game because don't get me wrong, there's teams that will that we came up against, and I'm not just saying this because I interviewed on, but David Golds are both a prime example, right? They come and they set up to frustrate the hell out of their team like Hearts. They sit in, they're tight, they're structured. Good gaffer. Ridiculous gaffer from what I've heard. But, you know, it's so organised. And I think, could you argue that Hearts maybe turn up to these games and be like, we're going to walk this? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Did Hearts um, maybe get a shock when this happened? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I think um, I w- mine and Adam's points total was a wee bit more <laughs> kind of optimistic. Again, oh, yours. again, Cammy, I was second to you. I predicted 67. After um, I helped you work it out. Yeah, you did, because I could I didn't fucking care what I was talking about. Um, there was calculators, there was like, bits exactly of paper galore. Um, did I go 69? I mean, I think did. I went... I think I went 22 wins, three draws, two losses. Yes, that is exactly how you did it. So it ended up being that Cami was six points away. I was exactly 10. Adam was 12 points off. Adam was the same points total between first and second. I predicted us to not drop points in 22 of 27. Yeah, (laughs) Yeah, he did. Can I make a point here? I, I, I expected so much more. <laughs> like, what? what is this? Okay, this, is, this is going in my radio demo when I get a job, right? Because I've, I've been spot on here and it's funny <laughs> to hear I'm doing well here. <laughs> Absolutely. So that is all the categories. As I've just said, Heart of Midlothian finished the end of this season with 27 games played, 17 wins, six draws, four losses, 63 goals, Scored 24 conceded. Both of those were the best um, in the division with a goal difference, of course, of 39. The next, uh, the second was joint between Dundee and Wraith, who both had nine. So we had a 30 better goal difference than uh, second and third. And we won the league by 12 points. We kind of spoke about it at the start, but I'll go to you first, Adam. Is that good enough? Um, I mean, I guess we're the best home and away team in the division as well if you want to go even further um so the fact that we can pick up points away from home is somewhat encouraging um given you know top tier struggles and that um but no no it's not Cammy, you're you're you're, you seem to be agreeing there do you agree like i said we did what was required but it was not good enough from the squad of players that we have Adam looks devastated that you've even no, said that. No, honestly, I, I was about to lose my shit there, but when he said, you know, that that that's fine. It, the, the cups are the primary frustration. I get what Cammy is sort of alluding to with the league and the points total, because he is right. Realistically, win the league by, you know, h- however we win it. But the cups, I mean, particularly when you look at the latter round draws... 
Well, it's this such we'll start, a disappointment. We'll speak about it now. So obviously, the kind of elephant in the room here has been that if you looked at that from a completely objective, non-Hearts fan point of view, you would go, yeah, you can understand a bit of the anger. However, it seems that this anger towards many Hearts fans, towards um, Budge, Nielsen, the board in general, doesn't it seems to be far more intense than maybe the league table suggests. However, of course, Hearts viewed this season, whether or not opposition fans think it was fair to, we viewed this season as, we're going to win the league anyway, so we look towards the Cups. What did we get in the Cups? We got a pretty convincing group stage win in the Betfred Cup, as you would expect. For the first time ever. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. We, ne- we never get on with that Cup competition in the group stage. Absolutely. However, we then lose to part-time Aloha. And then we go, right, okay, we're out at that. Which I think a lot of fans were kind of like, you know what, that's an absolute nightmare, but fine, because at that point we were still doing very well in the league. We were doing exactly what was expected, but still doing very well. And it was like, right, okay, fine. Well, if we get a bit of the League Cup, we've still got the Scottish Cup and the league to focus on. Scottish Cup rolls around. We don't play the game for ages because Brora Stranra or Brora, who were they? they were Camelin. Camelin, Brora Camelin, sorry, just kept getting delayed, kept getting delayed, kept getting delayed. How and many then, was that? Four times, I think it was delayed. It's a good three, it four, I think that's yeah. right, yeah. Um, and then Hearts travel all the way up to the Highlands, play Bro Rangers. And what perhaps is worse is that expectedly we lose to Bro Rangers, go out in the cup against another part time team. Officially, kind of within the Hearts fan base, it's now being regarded as the worst result in our history. A non league team. Yeah, exactly. Not even, exactly. Not even not... in the pyramid. And yeah. the, the stat that Corbett kept on throwing up, sorry to cut you off, was Go for it. the first loss to a non-league team since 1900. Exactly. So, uh, you know, it's it's easily probably the worst defeat in our lives, our parents' lives, grandparents' lives. Brutal. I think, so. so this is the big question I had, which is why I brought up the cup games. Uh, again, Cammy, I'll go to you first. Without, if you ignore the cup games, do you view this season as as a success? But with the cup games as included, how would you say the season is still a success? Without the cup games, I would say it was a, a success from the the fact that we were promoted. Mm-hmm. But what I think is really interesting, again, I'm pretty sure we go back to the championship the last time, and we still sometimes played horrendously but still got wins Mm -hmm. and I think that even though you could argue I'm totally contradicting myself that does show certain a degree of character yeah um listen we want trophies Hearts fans are are hungry for kind of trophies and cup finals and a wee day out of hand and win allows type thing but Mm -hmm. I think the, the within including the cup kind of games the league was a bit see if there's one word to describe it it's meh <laughs> right I okay cups we shouldn't be losing to the teams we lost to mm-hmm. credit to both teams mm-hmm. they came with game plans they, they they didn't let us kind of breathe and I'll be honest with you see the, the way we were playing I'm not surprised we got put out both cups at that time mm-hmm. I think not that's, surprised I think that's pretty fair Adam obviously people have been able to listen to our thoughts over the season. I think it's been made pretty clear from your camp that the season is not a success. It's just what's expected that we've done this season. Yeah. Yeah, I I think so. Um, You sort of even took a a brilliant point of mine in that, you know, once the Alloa defeat came around in the Betfred... I think the fallback was, well, chances are we're going to go on and win the league. So, you know, we could put all our eggs in the Scottish Cup basket. Mm -hmm. As finalists for the past two years, to then lose to Brora Rangers, having lost to Alloa in the other cup competition, is without doubt, you know, it's the biggest embarrassment of my heart-supporting life. And 
I'll I'll keep it, you know, PG um, is an absolute disgrace. Well, we will now spend the end of this podcast going through the squad that has done all this for good or bad. And basically, we're going to go through the players that have featured this season because there's obviously players who haven't featured, such as youth players or, uh, for example, Bobby Zlamal, who has played for more teams this season than most people have played. Uh, however, he's not going to be included because, one, he's definite, Bobby Zlamal is definitely away, um, but he also hasn't featured, such as some youth players haven't featured as well. But if you've played a minute in this Hearts team this season, we're going to speak about you. Now, of course, Adam... Um, has kind of done this uh, for people who potentially missed it, Adam. Tell them where you spoke about the squad. Yeah, so I, I spoke on um, Energy Sport, which is a, a basically a Napier website um, with Jamie, who we had on, what, a couple of weeks ago now? Two weeks um, ago, yeah. And it was hosted by, by Sean, who's a Kelly fan, and he went through sort of Jamie and I's choices with regards to... It was basically centred around a piece which Jamie had actually written as well, which you can check on the site. Um I think it was t- titled something like Hearts, should they stay or should they go? Um, and he basically dissected the whole squad, said, you know, his opinions. And then we, we had a podcast and basically did exactly the same thing, sort of centered around that piece. So I think we've we've linked it or sort of you can check yeah. it out with it with the episode that he was on. Um, so you can you can gain my thoughts or obviously continue listening here because I'll probably chuck in the odd uh, the odd comment or what have you. Yeah, of course. We'll still come to you, Adam. However, people can hear your stuff it's it's kind of going to be and again to be honest i've made my thoughts clear on a lot of these players throughout the season it's i'm very interested however to hear cammy's thoughts on individuals so we will start we will start from the back i think i probably know what you've got to say about this individual however craig gordon the sign-in who came in and has been universally beloved as was expected he has played he has um, made 29 appearances. Uh, he's been booked twice, which is quite interesting. Uh, his points per game is 2.17. Cami, would you keep Craig Gordon for next season? <laughs> I think so. You think so? Is that? Yeah. Is, 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 he's still got to prove himself. Yeah, let's he's be still honest. got to jump up. Away. No, of course he would. Sounds um, unsure. <laughs> yeah. No, of course he would. You know, you look at the, the some of the saves he's made that are just unbelievable um, and I'm not just saying this because the goalkeeper's union coming out of way here but like what, what a what a guy you know what a what a player he's such a humble guy and you can he really comes across like that and you know you, we have obviously spoken about players who have maybe just been like meh we're in this league Craig plays for that badge you know not very many players do um, in modern day football to be honest with you not just with regards to us but of course, I keep him, and I actually think he could be in with a shout off of captain next season. To be honest with you, I fully fully echo everything you've said, um, Adam. I'm going to assume that you're pretty much the same as well. Easiest pick on the list, definite keep. So, as I said, we're not going to speak about either Bobby Zamal or Colin Doyle, as neither has played a minute, and we both basically know that they're leaving. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, so we do move on to the guy who has been the backup. And we definitely know is staying as he has signed a two-year deal after his loan this season. He has been in the squad 32 times, however, only has made four appearances. An average of one point one and a half points per game for a Mr. Ross Stewart. Now, obviously, Cammy, we just spoke about earlier in the podcast where how the reaction to Ross Stewart signing, at least in my opinion, was a bit over the top for a backup goalkeeper. How about you, though? Are you happy to see him stay? Have you been impressed with him generally? What do you think? Listen, I I think he's been all right. I, I think, you know, there's there's worse goalies we could have signed or, shall I say, re-signed. Yeah. Um, one of which has bizarrely got a new goalkeeping glove deal this week. Um, oh, wait, feeling, can we speak about that, please? Can we actually speak about that? Joe Pereira on a supposed 20 bags a week as well. Yeah, Joe Pereira, if sick. you've missed this, has just signed. And I mean, he's actually just signed a new deal with generally, ev- it seems everything. Did yeah, he drop like, the pen? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Like, never a worse goalkeeper, never a worse player I've ever seen. Surely goalkeepers union can't extend for him. 
Do you know what? I was, uh, I, I'm, I'm stayed quiet on this, right? Because when he signed, I was buzzing because, you know, I'd heard so many good things about him. I think everybody was yeah. because of the, the calibre that he was playing with. And, and the allure of the club. I mean, isn't it? I mean, we're talking about sort of new deals and sort of, you know, merch and brands, all this sort of jazz. Ultimately, that comes with being a Manchester United player, whether you make your first team debut or not. And big David De Gea was like, good luck, mate, and tweeted them. And I was like, oh, he must be decent. Oh, shit. I was like, you're next, big Dave. <laughs> Get on. On. Imagine him playing the owl on a cold Tuesday night. I need bother. That'd be class. That'd be amazing. But so you're happy to keep Ross Stewart generally? Yeah, I think, um, like I made the point earlier, that Harry Stone will be a, a hearts number one at some point. I've got no doubt about that. Um, but what's the point of them sitting on the bench? You know, you've, you've got a, a fairly solid goalkeeper. Um, I think he'll, he'll do a job um, and that's what matters. You know, it's backup goalies. You, you look at Celtic for years, had Craig Gordon as their backup goalie. Like, come on, eh? Um, so, nah, f- fairly happy with that one. I, I don't agree with the outburst on Twitter, but then again, I think Hearts could have won the league, winning 27 games, had won the Scottish 9-0 against Celtic, could have absolutely pumped Hibs in the bet Fred, and they're still be Folk Monan. Yeah, that's right. Do you know and what I, I mean? Think, to be honest, I actually think one of them is on this call because Adam, how do you feel about Ross Stewart signing a two year deal? Couldn't care less. I just hope that Craig Horn <laughs> doesn't get injured. <laughs> Simple. Otherwise, we're done. Fair enough. We then move away from goalkeepers to a player who I think many people didn't expect to see this season, uh, but have been absolutely delighted to. Uh, John Souter came back into the side. He has been in the squad six times, but was actually used four times. In those two ga- uh, four games, he, again, much like Craig Gordon, has picked up two bookings, uh, very on brand for Sopey, averaging the joint highest points per game ratio. But of course, you have to take into account he has only played four games at two and a half. I think I speak for everybody, but I will go to uh, Cami first again that we hope John Suter stays and stays fit. Yeah, and I think we are such a more compact team when he's in the in the squad. I think you know, there's there's that little bit of composure. And listen, I really like Craig Halkett, the noble company to Halkett, who again hasn't really had the best season at times, but there's some there's so much kind of composure and a little bit of let's put the, a foot on the ball and just chill a bit. Um you could argue, and I'm interested to avenge your thoughts, should he be in Steve Clark's squad? Well, I think if you just look at what he's done this season, there is no argument against it. The argument that comes up is if you take a guy off four appearances in the championship. Mm-hmm. But I'd take him. He's better than but then, Grant Hanley. But then do you... Not very right, obviously, he's, he's had a horrific injury. And by the way, credit for coming back. Yes, several horrific injuries. Yes, credit for coming back. Um, because at one point, I was told he was not coming back. Mm. I was told he was, he was used and he was absolutely done. And I was delighted when you see him training because Hearts actually never said anything. Did you notice that he just appeared mm. in the training? Book. It was like yeah. it was just nothing. Um, but nobody even noticed that. him because it was the hair. Nobody noticed who it was. Everyone's and the was, beard. He had a that. beard out of nowhere. And it was like, whoa, he's a different human. Yeah. And I think if, if you're going to look at, I mean, I know we always say do not pick a player on reputation, pick a player on merit and on form. I think you have to look at Sophie as a footballer. Especially because the squad's been extended as well. Yeah, is it 30 now you can get in the squad? Or okay, something 20, like that? 26, I think. I think it's gone from 23 is to 26. It? So right. I think that the debate that seems to be arising is who's taking up these sort of three places. Yeah, but I, I don't know. I don't know. I mean, I'm trying to recall his Scotland career. I'm, I'm, I, he has been capped a couple of times, isn't yeah. he? Yeah, he has. So, I mean, going off Steve Clark's words, you know, recently in the press, it seems as though it's going to be young guys, kind of first-timers, I'd, I'd be very shocked if it's not, you know, your Nathan Patterson's, your David Turnbull's, your Ryan, Ryan Golds. Do you yeah. think Craig Gordon will be in the squad? Yeah. Yeah, Gordon goes. Has yeah, to be. Definitely. Gordon goes, 100%. And, he should be number one. And it's uh, it's funny you mentioned, obviously, 
suitor and Gordon because I think that was five clean sheets to end the season. Five, yes. six clean sheets. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's annoying that the goals to Queens obviously arrived because then we could have been looking at, you know, a potential club record. I know it's second yep. tier and we're not really caring, but it would have been, you know, a nice consolation. Here I am looking for a positive. So just let me have it. Just keep Absolutely. fishing. Exactly. So, as I say, we're all agreed that Johnson should stay. We go to another player who came in at the start of the season and has, this is, this sounds a bit harsh, potentially had a season of two halves. Stephen Kingsley came in uh, as a free agent and if you had spoken to me before January, I would have said arguably player of the season. He came in and was just ridiculous. He has played 24 games for us, got four goals, one assist, uh, a booking as well. Average point, uh, points per game of 2.1. So basically when we play Stephen Kingsley, we win games. However, kind of Adam's theory of the moment he signed his new deal, he seemed to kind of deteriorate. However, obviously, it also coincided with the team as a whole massively deteriorating. And then, unfortunately, obviously, season was curtailed early by injury. Cami, how have you felt Stephen Kingsley's done this season as a whole? I like him. I really do like him. I think he gives us something that we haven't had for a few years. You know, obviously, we'll go on to, to speak about how good Hick he was and, you know, how well he's doing now. But Stephen Kingsley gives you that little bit of stability. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Aaron Hickey did that as such. You know, listen, I wish Aaron all the best and he's he's doing really well um, in Italy and stuff. But there was a little bit of rabbit in headlights at times with Aaron Hickey. Mm-hmm. And... I think with Kingsley, there's that little bit of experience to, again, just chill out a wee bit. And I think if he's fully fit, obviously, I'm presuming Michael Smith will be at right back and Sophie at centre half. And you could obviously make a case with who they're centre half. It's probably Halkett at the moment. That's a fairly solid back four. I could guard them behind them. Mm-hmm. Well, Technically. that's That point that you just made there about experience is really important because Adam despite him having so much experience, he is only 26. I know it's so weird to everybody because he made his debut at Falkirk when he was so young, but do you think that's also a positive, that it's not another player that is past 30 that's doing well just now but doesn't have much beyond that? Stephen Kingsley is actually theoretically coming into the prime of his career. Without a doubt, mate. And I think it's funny how we've sort of talked about Scotland. It seems as though all our best players are left back. So if I'm looking at it from a selfish point of view, I think it's brilliant that he's not sort of in Scotland contention and that he's only sort of available for us. I know it sounds really daft because obviously we want, you know, we want Hearts players to be internationals and to, you know, gain all the sort of accreditation that comes with that. But we just want a solid season out of a left back that we haven't had, you know, Cammy's right with Hickey. He's probably the first since... Lee Wallace, if we're mm. going as far back as that, yeah. maybe maybe generous towards Adam Eckersley, sort of the last time we were here. Um, so no, I, I'm a big fan of his. Um, and I mean, I did chuck that theory out about his contract. I think also a big part of it was perhaps the the penalty miss at Hamden. I don't know whether he's perhaps fully over that, but with you know when he's fit and firing, I, I think he's caviar. I, I really do like Stephen Kingsley. I think he's. Very composed and a, just a very good footballer who I, I'm more than happy to keep if he can get back to his best, of course. Well, so far, it's been pretty much universal keeps. However, I think we now come to a person that there is a discussion potentially. So we actually come to a player who has played the most this season. There is no one with a, more appearances. It is Craig Halkett. Uh, been in the squad 31 times, physically played 30 times, got one goal, one assist, four yellow cards. A points per game of 2.1. Cami, I'll come to you first because obviously you just mentioned there about Craig Halkett. There has been some discussion about Halkett needing to be moved on as he hasn't been the player that many expected him to be, whereas other people are saying, no, listen, if we can just get good things around him, he'll be fine. Where do you stand on Craig Halkett and how do you think he's done as the season as, over the season as a whole? I'm very much under the impression that it's difficult to draw the kind of 
idea from whether it's been good or not because again I know these guys train together every single day but how many defensive partners has he had and that's what I would argue you know football's about consistency and you know getting used to and that's why I genuinely believe at the moment so say if we took this squad into the Premier League next season our best back four I believe would be Smith Soapy Halkett and Kingsley Mm -hmm. Um, and I think with Halkett, if he's got Soapy beside him, I mean, there's an argument saying he's lost a bit of pace, but I'm not being funny. He's not going to be the, the quickest player when he joined Hearts. Um, I, I think if he's playing alongside Soapy, and I do think we need another centre half um, and in the summer, but I'd keep him. You know, I think he, I think he does a job. He does what's needed. But he looks so much more comfortable alongside Sope than he did alongside Bera. And listen, I'm not going to sit and sweep Bera. Right? He obviously, the injury that he had ruined him, and there's no even any doubt in that. Um, and it's obviously sad to see that he's gone the way he's gone and the, the comments on social media, because some of the comments about him are horrendous. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if you look at the guy's career. But... I don't think Halkett played well alongside Bera because he was almost having to do two jobs. Same with Popescu, I'd argue. Well. Yeah, I don't think Popescu will be at heart much longer either, but I would keep Bera. I would keep... I'll try that again. Keep that's Bera. an edit. Shut up, that's an edit. <laughs> no, uh, that's getting kept. That's going to that's gonna be tricky giving his away, mate, but... No, I'd, I'd definitely keep Halkett. Yeah, but... I th- Halkett's a weird one for me because I fully agree with everything you just said. You need to... As- as a former centre half, you need to have. Uh, I was tall. I was tall, and that was it. I could head the ball, and I was tall. That's why I was a centre half. Um, you need to have someone that you can trust, that you know how they're going to play, you know the roles you're going to play. Even if Papescu was in that role all season, I wouldn't know how he's going to play. I don't think Papescu knows how he's going to play. But on the other hand, there is an argument potentially that Halkett got off a wee bit light because his centre-half partner has always been one of the worst players. It's kind of made him look a, a wee bit better in some games than he's actually been, but then also a wee bit worse than he actually has been. Craig Halkett is firmly in the camp of, I'm fine with his, if he stays, but I wouldn't be gutted if he leaves. Adam, you're nodding there. Are you similar to that? Yeah, I totally echo those thoughts. Um I'm not going to lie as well, obviously, with the news circulating this week that Declan Gallagher is joining Aberdeen on a free contract. I was sort of banging that drum Well, he performed well with Declan Gallagher at Livingston. Is that sort of the, the guide that he needs back there? But obviously now I guess we'll never know. So still need a centre-half for me. But again, I'm willing to give Craig Halkett a chance. Certainly so- in comparison to other centre-halves. Well, or we'll just re-sing Callum Patterson and put Michael Smith at half with game yeah. sorted. And then that'll be class. Um, that'll go be ahead. class. Uh, we will just cover both the other centre halves just now because one of them, as Cameron just said, Christoph Berra is obviously away to Wraith Rovers, so he is definitely leaving. And Mihai Popescu, uh, someone who I couldn't actually believe had played 23 games for us. I didn't expect it to be as many, but he also did get a goal. As did Berra. Berra also got an assist. Berra with a um, points per game of 1.75. Popescu with a points per game of exactly two. Um, That's incredible because if he's got a loss. Yeah, but. absolutely. But I think we're both agreed. Well, we're both agreed. We're agreed that both of them should be leaving. Yes. Yep. Perfect. We then move on to another fullback, but also. Arguably our best centre half when Soapy isn't here. Michael Smith, he has played 26 games, got two goals, five assists, three yellow cards. His points per game is 2.19. I think everybody's agreed that we keep Michael Smith. Resounding keep, yeah. I thought you were saying something else today, but you were shaking your head. Yeah, no, you were shaking your head. No, it's like, no, no, that's that's a resounding keep. That's, again, that's an easy pick. Yes. We then come to a man where I'm very interested to hear people's thoughts about. Oh, it's a man coming here. who has played 16 games for us this season, got one assist, is averaging, is averaging, his points per game was 2.1. He, 
absolutely ruined someone in the final of the Scottish Cup. He also won the penalty for us in the semi-final against Hibernian. It is the man who just runs and runs and runs and runs and runs, A.D. White. Now, I'll come to you first, Cammy. How do you feel about A.D. White? He looked like a different player in that semi-final. Where <laughs> have you been all this time? He did. He actually, I remember thinking, when there was a long ball played, I'm like, who the fuck's that? Yeah. Because I've never seen pace like it. Yeah. And then after that, I was like, like Ronaldinho as well. I know. Yeah. Uh, nah. I, listen, I like Katie White. I think I think he was absolutely roasted from the support. Um, but I don't think he's good enough. I think that's pretty fair. I quite like him as a left winger. Yeah. I, yeah, like a left back, he, he is not. But he just he does just kind of run his heart out. But... Yeah, I think there's far better out there. Adam, you seem to be reacting to this far harsher. I don't think you see any positives. In there's hate right. in his eyes, right? No, not, a, not a sufficient standard for a hard middle football club. Goodbye. Well, one, we'll come to a man now who I think people thought he wouldn't be at a standard when he was announced mere weeks ago. However, he's come in for a few games and has actually been one of our better players. Uh, only five appearances, but with a points per game of 2.2. Shea Logan has been told he is definitely not being kept on. Cami, would you have been fine with a year deal? Yeah, but I don't know where I'd play him. Interesting. Because I think... I've seen him for Aberdeen for years, right? And I'll be honest, I hated him when he was at Aberdeen. <laughs> I absolutely despised the boy. I, I remember Sunday being a little bit abusive and swearing at him sitting next to me. And she Logan turned around and stuck the middle finger up. And it was the best thing I have <laughs> ever seen because then the supporter next to me goes absolutely off his head. And I'm like... Why are you reacting? You did this to him. He's literally just giving you it back. Yeah. Sit yourself down and take it. Um, he's that type of player. And this, again, might just be me because when I watched the games, I was maybe doing something else or whatever at the same time. I wasn't 100% fully concentrating on it. It just seems to be there. Like, he's not done anything that I'm thinking, wow, like, that's amazing. But he's been there for me he didn't be there, if that makes sense. Yeah, he's not put a foot wrong. Yeah, he's, he's been substandard, and I, I don't know where this means he's going to end up. Is he out of contract at Aberdeen, or is he yeah, back yeah, there? Yeah. Right, so... His deal's up come the summer. I can see him signing for somebody like St. Johnson or somebody like that, where like he's solid, he is. He's not going to get in ahead of Sean Rooney, though, mate. But he's not going to get... Yeah, exactly. But... Obviously, Hearts played him as like a right winger, like kind of wing back player when he was first brought in. And be honest, it was the most bizarre signing I think I've ever seen. Yeah. You know, it was leaked what was it a day before. Yeah. And I'm like, right, okay. And like you said, to be fair to him, he's done nothing wrong, but he never really jumped out. But it's hard to judge because he's only played so many games. Mm-hmm. I'd like to have seen him half a season, like but- as in a proper season. I don't think we conceded a goal while he was at the club, actually. Well, yeah. this, is, this is the thing. So we'll come to another player later. But when John Souter, Shea Logan and this other player came in from the Dunfermline game onwards, Hart and Midlothian did not concede a goal. Yeah. I think it's interesting because I am fine with him not being given a deal, but I would have been fine with him being given a 12-month deal. Like It's the, the same with Halka. You're like... Yeah. If he leaves, then fair. If he stays, then fair. It's kind of in that same boat, but I would like to have seen more of him to see what he was about. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, this is going to be a big one. Right, we come to a man who used to play with Shea Logan, actually. A man who came in in January. He has played 18 games. A points per game average of the second lowest that we've had so far of 1.83. He has scored four and got one assist. Cammy, where do you stand on Gary Mackay, Stephen? I, I like him. 
I do like him. I think now he's got a little bit of confidence. He's kind of a player that is really, I mean, again, it's probably no surprise, but he's really underwhelmed. You <laughs> yeah, know, and he's, yes. he's just been there like, oh, okay, he's playing. It's like the gaffer's son. Like, he just, <laughs> he's just been getting a game. But see, lately, he's been brilliant, but I think that's his position. You know, I, I really, really like him as a player. I think he's tricky, he's quick, he's direct. I know we'll come to another certain player who likes a wee direct run from his own half. Um, but I like him. I would certainly keep him. Um, because at the moment, I think actually you could argue he's come on to form at the wrong time. Yeah. yeah because the course. season's now done. Yeah. Um, but I would certainly keep Mikai Steven. And again, I'm all for football friends and stuff. But having John Suter back in that heart squad will do him the world of good. Yeah, absolutely. Adam, we have obviously over the last few weeks, made it clear that we're kind of on opposite end of the spectrum, but we're starting to get towards a consensus. Um, if you asked me three weeks ago, would I keep Gary McKay Steven? It would be a point blank, no, get rid of him. I, I, listen, I made it very clear I didn't want to sign Gary McKay Steven. I made that abundantly clear. Do I still want to keep Gary McKay Steven? I would be fine if he left because two games do not change the previous 16 where he's been, I think, Cammy, you were very kind to call him underwhelming. I'd call him fucking awful. That's more my kind of stance on GMS throughout his time. However, no one can deny that his last two games, he was deservedly man of the match in both of them. A double in both, you can't kind of just ignore those two games either. So he's another that needs a preseason. That's that's the most interesting thing. If he comes in next season, hits the ground running as he has done, I'm fine with it. I'm absolutely fine with it. If he even slightly shows what he did the previous 16 games, I'll just be sat going, we've got another season of this. We've got another season of a couple of great games and then just nothing for the vast majority of it. But Adam, you've made it very... I mean, you were very on board with the signing when it first happened. The 16 games after it, you were kind of flummoxed. Underwhelmed. To, yeah, how he yeah. was doing it. But where do you stand on them? Oh, I'm, I'm back in Gary Incher. Yeah, I uh, need, need We're that. We're not going back to that. We're not going back to that. I'm telling you, he's the best is yet to come. <laughs> that, that could well be a common theme just for this sport <laughs> generally. I will well, have to have left and play week two. Aye, yeah. exactly. <laughs> as soon as they're not pulling on Maroon anymore, they turn into world beaters. Ollie Lee, Ryan Edwards. Yeah. Absolutely. Need we say more? Look at Kyle Lafferty at Kelly. Flame, mate. <laughs> Well, we come to a man next who is ve- we're probably going to have a very similar conversation about because he was one that a certain individual from this podcast was very in favour of signing. And then when he did sign, it was, oh, it's been interesting. Basically, a certain individual has played 28 games. He's got three goals and five assists, a points per game of 2.1. Before I come to Adam, because I generally know his thoughts, Cami, both how have you felt Andy Halliday has done this season and would you keep him for next season? And do you like one open goal? <laughs> <laughs> and Sports Sound and Super Scoreboards and all these other media outlets that he's on. Yes, yes, yes. No, yes, yes, no. Um, no, I... Uh... It's a little bit of a kick in the balls when it comes to Andy Halliday because I was championing on the sign. Very I think Daniel was as well, can I just say? Very I think it was on much board. so. Yeah, very much so. I was pretty much wetting myself on the podcast because I'm sure it was in the papers that week that we recorded mm-hmm. that he was about to sign. Would I want him? Oh, and I'd be absolutely buzzing if he signed. He has been. Pretty pish. Um, 
But it's strange because the odd game, you haven't really noticed him. That's when he's been solid. Um, I say the odd game very in the light in the loosest term possible, boys. But he is a player. Usually when he's been at left back instead of centre mid. I, I was literally about to ask. Yeah. Do you think he's a better left wing back or a left back as opposed to a central midfield player? And for me, I'm keeping just because of that versatility. But yes. I want to hear your thoughts. Yes, I, I very much agree with that. He's also a player. How many yellow cards he got? He has got fa- four. four. Yeah. He's the type of player that is like that little bull terrier type person. No, he'll, he'll get himself in and amongst it. Arguably sometimes too much. I, I think he's a fucking idiot, by the way. Like, part of the reason that we bought him was that he's that Scott Brown element of, like, he's just like a prick who can really... Wind folk up. Yeah, but he can't. He's rubbish at it because folk just get in his head and do it to him. Look at what happened against Queen of the South every fucking game. <laughs> With Willie where Gibson. Was, where Willie Gibson just had to look at him. And Andy Halliday would be like, I'm going to kill you. And Willie Gibson would just be laughing. Like, I agree that he's a wee terrier, but he's rubbish at doing the things I want him to do. He's, a, he's like I, Scrappy Doo, he's like Scooby's cousin. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I totally agree with Adam that as a left back, which I think at the start of the season when he got announced is where I said, I think we both said, Adam, that we'd prefer him to play at, as a left back because more as cover for Kingsley. Because he is that really versatile. But I just think he is an I think he's terrible in the middle of the park. So I don't even think he is that versatile because he can't do the other role well enough. He he and Kingsley as left back options, I'm happy with. I think that's pretty fair. If he right, I'll be fine to keep him if he only ever plays left back. That's, just, that's just Annie's contract going forward. You can only yes, play left yes, back. Yes, you're only allowed to play left back. Daniel McIver says you can only play left back because that's what you're doing. Absolutely. That's, I mean, to be honest, why is that not written into people's contracts? We are, listen, we're go- I'm now going to come into a man that we have massively influenced. His heart's career is defined by pretty much my podcast co host as Andy Irving. This is going to be an interesting one. Obviously, he has played 27 games. Uh, contributed three goals and the most assists with eight assists. He's also had six yellow cards, which I find quite interesting, which is also uh, the second highest amount of yellow cards. Um, he has His points per game, however, is 1.96. The Port of Earl Pirlo, obviously, we christened him, particularly Adam, besides me, christened, um, christened him that. I will actually come to you first, Adam, because he is the man that is almost defined by you. That's my boy. The contract's been on the table since around November, December, we're led to believe. At least got into the media speculation around January. The contract, as far as we know, has still not been signed. Instead of maybe a, would you keep or would you get, would you leave? Do you think we will keep? No. Because it's May and he's still not signed. So no, I think he's off. Um, with that. Which which is a disappointment, um, particularly if we're sort of only getting kind of a, a training fee or whatever for him. Um, but I, I, I don't know with, I mean, I don't know if this is just sort of general kind of Twitter talk about have you, if, if he does go abroad, I mean, what happens? So the whole Irving saga for me, we can blame Hearts all we want, but equally it's got to come from him as well. So I think both's at fault. And ultimately, we haven't reached a, a deal that's a, a, or sort of all parties have agreed on. So maybe it's best that we part ways. It's as simple as that for me. No matter how talented you are. I like that, the way that you've said that. Listen, Andy is another guy who I've had the pleasure to interview a couple of times. A top, top guy. I think he's been really good for Hearts. But for me, after the whole contract saga thing, he's not been the same player. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I find interesting is, you know, when it was kind of very apparent that the contract was on the table, it was he signed, wasn't he signing? There was no real, oh, Andy Irvin's not going to sign for us because he's going to so-and-so. Mm-hmm. It's been suspiciously quiet. Yeah. Um, I'd love him to stay. 
but he's not been the same player. He's a bit like Harry Cochran in that sense. Like, we'll definitely come to that because yeah. I think that's a very good comparison. Two young players in the middle of the park who have come through to Hearts, massively impressed right at the start, have had reported their very high ceiling. Fans have expected a lot. And I, th- I think it is actually quite telling that the guy has the most amount of, the, of assists in the team, but also has a far less points per game ratio than certain individuals who have played similar amounts of games. I know that he's played 27 games, which is one of the most. However, when you look at Craig Halkett, Craig Halkett's points per game is 2.1, which is in comparison to Irvin's 1.9. Smith has played just a game less and has 2.19 compared to Irving's 1.96. Obviously, again, it's hard to look into points per game for individuals because it's based around the whole team and stuff like that. But when you play that consistently, it starts to tell more of a story where I felt like Andy Irving on his day can be our best player and everything runs through him, particularly at the start of the season. Whenever Andy, there was the Aloha game where he came on and scored immediately and just we, he just kept getting us out of trouble constantly. And then the contract negotiations started. And I'm often not one to be like, oh, a contract started or a contract signed, so therefore forms decreased. But it has literally coincided <laughs> with that. And Adam, I, I really do agree with your final point there where it's like, it doesn't matter how good you are. If you're not willing to play for us, it, it really doesn't matter because we're not going to be getting that response. No, we're, we're not going to be getting the best out of him, despite the fact that I think he's got the most assists in the division as well. Yes, um, he does. So there's, you know, talented boy, but, you know, if he's not signing on, then I'm starting to question how much of a jambo he really is. But do you think, is there an element, however, we do have to remember the guy's only 20, he's, he'll of have course. an agent in his ear of telling course, him and, that he'll be able and, to get a bigger this, move. This is a good point. I don't know whether he's being, you know, ill-advised by their own people or whether it's solely, you know, a money-making thing. The um, thing is, we'll never know. No, yeah. of course. The, the only person that can answer that is Andy Irving, so you're probably as well moving on, mate. Absolutely. Well, we then go to the player that we just mentioned, and we know is definitely not staying, as it was announced by the club, I think it was last month, that Harry Cochran would not be extended in his deal. Uh, the man with the highest points per game because he only played one game and we won, so he has a three. <laughs> um, Cam, I'll come to you because I don't know if we're going to have similar views on Harry Cochran because I have quite a set view, but how do you feel? Are you gutted that he's not staying? Are you actually happy or do you feel it's another one that's potentially got away? Harry's uh, a difficult one. It really is a difficult one. I'm not just saying that to be Awkward, you know, he, he just kind of disappeared. Eh? Like, mm-hmm. even when he was at Dunfermline, I don't think he was getting the game time. Um, I, to, to the extent that maybe he fought, I also don't think he was as good at was it Montrose? He was away on the Montrose, track, yeah, yes. yeah. I, I don't think he's developed the way that Hearts thought he would develop. But whose fault is that? Because there's, I mean, we'll not go into it, but there are so many rumours all over the internet about why that is. Mm-hmm. Not really gutted he's, he's leaving because for me, if he was the player that we all thought he was going to be, he would have gone to Dunfermline and bossed it. He would have gone to Montrose and bossed it. And he just hasn't. And it's a shame because, again, he's another talented boy that something has not worked out, whatever it may be. Unbelievably, we have actually agreed on Harry Cocker. I don't don't know why, I was just kind of expecting you to be more um, guided about him leaving, but I almost mirror your exact sentiment. I had a lot of high hopes for him, but he's nowhere near lived up to any of them. Again, obviously, he is only 20. His career is just starting, basically. He might come back to bite us in the arse. Of course. I think he will. I think he will too. Do you think he will? Yeah, I think he will. I, I necessarily don't. I don't know what it is. Like it probably it just depends does. on the right club and right gaffer, though, yeah. doesn't it? Yeah, so of course. There's, there's no way that we could say for sure that he definitely will or won't. So we yeah. just have to wait and see how it plays out. Well, we then move on to a man who, for me, is one of the biggest definite keeps in the whole team. A man that has not 
played as much as I wanted him to, uh, irrespective of the fact that he has been in the squad 30 times, but only actually played 19. Uh, he's contributed one goal, two assists. And with a points per game, however, of 2.32, Cami, how do you feel Peter Herring has done this season? Again, it's one that I'm not sure on. Interesting. Um Listen, I think Peter Herring of the Hearts team of a few years ago was frighteningly good. I, however, think he was brought back too early for that cup final, and I think that pretty much buggered him. Um, and us. And us. Yeah. Um, I like him. I, I do. And he's solid. Like, he is... It's hard when you, you you go through this squad and we've just said we don't think Irvin's staying. Uh, obviously, Calkins away. You know, there's a few youngsters who I would definitely keep that I know will come on to. I'd keep him. Mm-hmm. I'd keep him. He's maybe not a guaranteed starter every single week. Um, and listen, people were sweating him for his red card a few weeks ago. Listen, it was a shock. It was a bad tackle, right? And anybody that does not think that's a red card needs to have a serious word with themselves, right? But I think that's just frustration, maybe. Yeah. I think he's let it get to him that he's not been able to play. I still don't think we've seen the same Peter Haring as we saw a few seasons ago. Obviously, it's so difficult to judge. Again, we come back to the same excuse in inverted commas. We've played 27 games with pretty much, boys, a shit pre-season. Mm-hmm. Stop, start, stop, start. Obviously, he's been injured and things, but... He's not had reserve football to be able no. to play. Yeah, that's also a huge point as well, by the way, because how many of these youngsters would have maybe been better off with the reserve football mm. as in the French players that haven't been playing? Um, Do you still think he came in a bit too late, though, mate? I think he possibly did. But I also think everybody was buzzing at the fact that, you know, we had Halliday, we had Irvin, we had him. A player who I'm gutted is left is Ollie Lee because I would have loved to have seen him and Ollie Lee together. Mm-hmm. Um... But I'm undecided on how I keep him just for the, the depth of the squad because he is useful. He's sort of in that sewer category as well. Yeah, of course he is. Mark, he? So, yeah, of course he yeah. is, mate. I, act, I personally, listen, It's there's no bones about it. I love Peter Herring. Um, oh, yeah. Oh, he's, in my opinion, on his day, he's our best player. Yeah. Um. I think he is obviously the third player that we mentioned earlier that since Sope, Shea Logan and Peter Herring have been in from starters, Hearts have not conceded a goal. It has allowed a player that will come on to soon to have a bit more freedom about his game. He just adds so much solidity and obviously he had that shocking period of time where his first half against Dundee was awful, where he was carted off. The home game against Ayr was really, really poor. But since he's come back, it has almost been like the Peter Herring of old, where it's just never does anything flashy, where it's like he's not going to score a 40 yarder. Or twice turn someone. Yeah, exactly. But he just controls the game completely. He calms it down. Yeah, absolutely. It allows other players around him who. Just a would... boss. Yeah, that's, that's exactly it. Adam, I'm assuming you're also in the keep campaign. Yeah, 100%, mate. So. One that I have a feeling we're going to be all united, but in the opposite sense, is Elliot Freer, who has played 11 games, scored twice, got one assist, unbelievably, with a points per game of 2.45. However, that is because, of course, he has only played 11 games. For the remaining kind of half, like kind of final third of the season, he never featured. He was very much kind of just ostracised out the squad. Are we all agreed Elliot Fear shouldn't be here next season? Catch you. Yeah. But I will say I, I'm glad it doesn't work out because I'm, I feel like that for every player that comes to Hearts that yeah. it doesn't work out for. Um, I think he's always but, tried hard. I don't has. think he's one of those players that you could criticise for not trying. It's just he's just not good enough. Yeah, I think it's just, yeah, I, I completely agree with that. And I think, was it the same with that? Was it Dylan Bikey that we got a few years yeah. ago who just, he could run for about 45 days, but he still wouldn't even catch up with anybody or do anything. But listen, like I say, yeah, he's not good enough and it's cheerio for now. But 
I, I do feel bad because it's not worked out. And of course, I mean, if one thing that I would I would say and I would stress is players come to Hearts for a reason. Mm-hmm. And, but and it's they're just not, not worked all out. Kelly, are they, mate? No. I mean, the gaffer said that himself. Yeah, exactly. Right, we'll get on to that in a bit. Anyway, so we're, we're going to speak about, this is the one exception I'm going to make to the rule of hasn't featured this season. He is actually hasn't even been in the squad. He is the only person, apart from Colin Doyle, who obviously was moved out on loan at the start of the squad, who hasn't been involved. It's like Demure. Now, the only reason I mention him is because he is reportedly one of the highest earners and is still here for another few years. There is, I think it actually was Jamie Adam, when he was on here, that he was like, Demure, what's even more frustrating about Demure is that why couldn't he have played this season in a lower league? Why couldn't he have offered something? Even though he's awful, it's even worse because he, he's been getting all this money and hasn't even been featured. Can That's he, a great point because can he ultimately he could have restored some confidence as well and some belief. That's true. So. That is very true. You know who it reminds me of a little bit, but I rate this player more? Mallory Martin. You rate him more? I'd say yeah. they're very much on the same level. No, I, I'd rate them slightly I better. so different players. Oh, they yeah, are. They're very different players, but yeah, absolutely. What kind of frustrated me a little bit is I'm pretty sure I saw the more celebrating when Stephen Naismith lifted the cup. I hope I, not. I didn't I'm notice I'm sure that. I saw that. I only noticed Popescu going I'm sure mental. somebody tweeted it. Yeah, I might Popescu be wrong. Popescu was the one that got me angry. Yeah. Um, listen... Again, it's hard for us to speak about because we don't know if there's a backstory. Yeah. But for me, it's no thanks, but all the best. Okay. But there was, do you know what confused me though, right? And again, it's so similar to Joe Pera. There was so much hype and so much disappointment from who was it, QPR we got him from? There's no Cardiff. Cardiff. Oh, Cardiff, sorry, yeah. So there was so much kind of disappointment of some Cardiff fans going, I can't believe they've let him go. Yeah. And now we're like coming back. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, a player who potentially is in the same camp as that has actually been at Motherwell the last few months. However, yeah, unfortunately, his season ended with a bad injury. Jordan Roberts played 12 ga- eh, 10 games, sorry, he was in the squad for 12. No goals, one assist. Funnily enough, again, quite a high points per game of 2.4 but that of course is a count of he played mostly at the start of the season when we were winning most games a man who was absolutely awful for us kind of summed up by his semi-final performance against Hibs and then just went to Motherwell and was class and and still scored against Hibs at Easter Road yeah exactly. so, at least we had somebody do that this first season. game <laughs> yeah awful. um I think he's actually got another year on his deal yeah if I'm not right. wrong so yeah what do you think? Do you, would you guys keep him or would you get rid? Um, it's funny we talked about Motherwell. If Devante Cole doesn't sign on, I'd quite like to try and use him as sort of a, a make weight and a potential deal for him. Um, or even sort of, I know Alan Campbell's another one that's been linked. Um, I don't know. But it, I'm not keeping him. <laughs> okay. I'll say, I'll, I'll say that much that's, that's the one day I like that that was kind of like that feedback sandwich you got to school really positive you know then we'll be cruel and then you didn't go back for positive nah just not. <laughs> um, no I think I'm kind of in the same boat he was a player we were running games but he was just kind of there like he didn't really do anything to really excite me the, the um, main thing I remember is that when we played Aloha um, the game that Elliot Fear scored in the quote that I remember was he didn't do anything, and you just heard Robin Nielsen go, "Jordan, fucking run!" Like that. And it's if you have to ask a winger to, to run, run, it speaks probably. volumes. Yeah, yeah exactly. definitely. Shall we move on from him? Absolutely. To a man that has come in in January, and especially in the last few games, has really come on their game. It's Aaron McNeff. He's played fourteen games, scored two, got one assist. Of course, those two games have actually come in the last two home games. Uh, Sadly, one of the lowest points per games in 1.7. But, of course, he came in to the side that was just in free fall, basically, and doing really, really poorly. Uh, however, 
He has been recently played in his actual position in a box to box instead of just chucked out on the right hand side. A what a Lincoln. novelty! Exactly, playing a player in the correct position and they actually play well. Watch this, Craig Gordon will start up front first game this exactly, season. Exactly, exactly. Um, Cami, how have you felt about McInniff this season and are you happy for him to stay for the Premiership? Uh, yeah, I, I like him. I uh, I really liked him when he first came in. You know, he was solid. You know, he, he did what was required, plus more. Mm-hmm. Um, I think him and Irvin worked quite well together. Um, obviously he really dropped off the boil a little bit but I think when you look at the season we've had bar maybe Craig Gordon who's even had a couple of funny moments nobody's really obviously nobody stayed on par uh, I like him though I really do like him and I think he'll be a good player next season Adam are you pretty much saying because he was the player I was alluding to that with Herring in the middle, it allows McInniff that bit more freedom to push forward. And we've seen that, especially in the last couple of games. As I said, two goals in the last two games at home. That's why we'll oh, sing no! today for Aaron McInniff. Can I just How say, long have you been waiting to get that out? I haven't even told you this. We got four separate people um, complimenting you on that song after that podcast. Listen, that that's that's the new sort of Portobello Pirlo. Um, <laughs> you forget it'll be it'll be passed <laughs> around. Go and start yeah, copywriting yeah. this, so you can actually make some money off it. Exactly. Fact. That that's trademarked as of now. <laughs> that, you do know that's not how trademarks work. <laughs> I don't care. I don't care. I'll go back. I'll quote that tweet and then just chuck the little symbol. I'll text you how to do it. You'll be fine. Thanks, so you definitely, Adam. You're definitely keeping Mac and Effin. Yeah, I like him. I like him. Um, I, I I totally echo Cammy's thoughts. I think he's spot on. Absolutely. Um, another player who I have absolutely no idea what we're going to do with. Uh, played one game for us this season, so again, has a th- points per game of three because we won the game. Um, it's Lewis Moore, who was chucked out on loan to Abroath, and it was almost the best thing that could have happened to him in terms of showing his worth to the team, because the players that we brought in to replace him, Freer, Roberts, etc., another player who we will come on to that is the arguably the worst player we've had this season, all replaced him, and none of them were perhaps up to the level. I think Moore's still got a year left in his deal because he signed that extension under Stendhal. So he potentially has another year. I can't I remember. Might be right. If he does, um, maybe need some clarity on that. But yeah, I think you, but I think you might be right. See if it, let's go under the guise that he does have another year. Cami, would you keep him on? And if so, how much game time do you think he'd get? Okay, so I'm going to answer that in two ways. I would keep him, mm-hmm. but I don't think he will get kept. That's. I think that's. Kind of, I think he's gone. I think he's gone because I think if he was going to be kept, I think he would have been in the squad. Uh, I think he would have been in the squad, he would have featured a lot more regularly. Yeah, yeah. Do you know what is a real shame? Is he was becoming a bit of a player under Stendhal? He He was was. one of the few, him and Sean Clare in particular, were the two standards from Stendhal's time. Um, I would love, love to keep him. I think he's a good player. I think he. Unlike a few others, his heart is in it. Mm-hmm. You can see that he wants to go and impress. You know, he was the, the player for me, same as Sean Clare, as you understand, though, that really thrived under the crowd. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, he wasn't scared to chuck himself in. You know, obviously, it's still really important, like your likes of kind of Irvin and, and Harry, still a very young player. I would keep him, but I don't think he will be kept. Adam, are you on that same kind of wavelength? Yeah, I think that's spot on. I think we'll sort of find a, a potential loan destination if we can't, you know, offload him. And then that'll probably be his heart's career, sadly. I think that's pretty fair. We move on to another youngster who I especially have been banging the drum for this season. Um, Scott McGill has played four games, so again, has a very high uh, points per game at 2.5. Obviously, hasn't featured... It. Scott McGill's kind of been the poster boy of why aren't we playing more youth? Because 
whenever he's come in in those four games, in my opinion at least, he's not put a foot wrong. Again, much like Hearing or Shay Logan in particular, not done anything amazing that you go, wow, look at that, but just come in, kept it tight. Obviously, Scott McGill's still going to be here next season. He's probably going to be one of those players that gets put out on loan for a season. But Cammy, would you like to see him feature more in the first team or are you happy to have him go back out on loan? I like him. I do. My only concern is that he turns into another Harry Cockham. Um, but again, he comes on to a game and, you know, I think a lot of opposition players, I mean, you'll need to remind me who he actually played against, but I think a lot of teams and opposition players underestimated him. He was playing against, so like, for example, his first two games he featured against um, East Fife and Wraith Rovers in the League Cup. And then I can't actually remember the two teams in the league he played, but again... I want to say Aloha for one, maybe. I think Aloha was And you've got a show. Yeah. Um, there were teams that I actually do agree with that, especially Wraith in that game where we won 3-1. Him and Cochrane dominated the midfield. Yeah, they, they really did. And I think it comes back to what could have been. Mm-hmm. Um, and again, it wasn't long ago that we were saying build the team around Andy Irvine. Yeah, I'm just hoping it, it doesn't come to be the same. What could have been? Adam, are you in the same boat there? Yeah, I am. Um, I, I don't, I don't want us to continually file these youngsters under this sort of same bracket. So. You know, it's just imperative that we find a, a suitable loan destination. Finley Pollock's in the same boat for me. Yeah. He is. Well, then we'll happily move on because he's the next player on the list. Obviously, only played twice right at the very end. Again, we won both those games, so he has a points per game of three. Can't he's actually got the game. best points of, of three. Yeah. At least he's played twice. He's, he's played, played more than one game. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, again, another player who... He didn't light the world on fire when he came in, but he just looked all right. Like it was a young Didn't look player. out of place. Yes, that's the best way of putting it. Obviously, he's only 16. He'll definitely be put out on loan next season. But I think Mad. him and McGill are very similar in the future. They have they definitely have a future at heart. It's just if they can make that level, we need to wait and see. So we're done with all the materials. We now only have the forwards, the first one is the man that may be choosing himself to leave football and it's not up for us to um, keep or leave. Stephen Naismith, the captain, played 24 games, contributed six goals, one assist, a points per game of 2.08. Cammy, you're shaking your head there. What's your thoughts on Stephen Naismith and would you keep him for another season? I don't think it's going to be whether up to hearts where they keep him. I don't think he'll play next season. Interesting. I think he has maybe realised, because let's be honest, we all kind of thought Nacy will light the championship on fire this season. To a certain degree, yeah. Not for me. I think, listen, being the Premier League is obviously where we need to be, but the championship is so physical and I think at times it's maybe outdone him slightly. Um, Listen, he is still such an important player to have. Sorry, I'll reword that. Such an important person to have in that squad. And I think if I read this rightly again, correct me if I'm talking rubbish, I'm sure he's currently acting as John Rankin's number two at the 18s. Yes, yes, yes. By the way, see if I was a 17-year-old playing for Hearts, even... Finley Pollock, 16, playing in the under-18s. What under a that is. You walk in, there's John Rankin, famous for the squiggle, and you walk in next to him, there's Stephen Naismith. Of, co- of course you're going to learn. Yeah. Um, don't think he'll be playing next season. I think he will be in a coaching at Hearts. Don't think he'll be playing. Will we miss him? It's up for it, debate. It's up for debate, but it depends who you bring in. Adam, are you pretty similar? Because I think that is the most important bit. I don't think we'll miss him much from a playing perspective, but from a mentality and person perspective, I think we need to fill that. It's, and it's imperative that he's kept around to try and instill that within, you know, the young players and the squad generally. Um, like Nasey off the bench, not a starter for me. Um, I think Cammy's pretty much hit the nail on the head again there, to be honest. Do you know who it reminds me of from a, 
a point of view that is, is useful to have around the squad is Aaron Hughes. Yeah. Not bad Hughes he was Not bad vital shape. around the kind of squad. And I'll tell you what, obviously, the, the women's team have now got Andy Kirk and Aaron Hughes as their coaching staff. And speaking to some of the players, learning from a, a defender's point of view, um, having Aaron Hughes, I don't get me wrong, Still it was a bit as slow as a bus to turn away, but look at the Kiviri hut. Like, yeah. do you know what I mean? Having that knowledge, even just to sit and speak to him. Um, and I think Nisi's in the same boat. And arguably, again, I think Christoph is in the same boat. Mm-hmm. I think Christoph had the opportunity to stay hard as a coach, but he wanted to carry on playing. Fair play to the guy. Do you know what I mean? But I think from an experience point of view, is is vital. Absolutely. Well, we'll move on to, again, much like Craig Gordon, the easiest keep. There is Liam Boyce, 27 games, 14 goals, 7 assists. Interestingly, a a points per game of exactly 2 because he's been there throughout everything, so the highs and the lows. But, I mean, we're keeping Liam Boyce by all means, aren't we? Another unanimous keep, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. The next one might be a bit more up for debate considering the start of this podcast Jamie Walker he has played 26 games contributed 8 goals 7 assists Um, interestingly I actually have it here he has out of the uh, 26 games he played 12 of them were as sub appearances he has also the exact same points per game as Liam Boyce exactly two Adam I'll come to you first because let's be honest We've spoken about this a lot. Are you keeping Jamie Walker or is it a situation where if we can get a better replacement, you're fine to let him go? The latter and also dependent on, you know, interested parties as well. Mm -hmm. If somebody comes in and he wants to leave, then I'm not overly bothered. That's Um, my my sort of standpoint on it. Cami, how about you? I'd keep him. Interesting. I would keep him. Um... I think the the thought of having um, Walker on one side, but it is about positioning because, you know, Mackay Stevens is so much better as a number 10. Yeah. But so is Walker. Yeah, Walker can't play out wide. At all. Walker can't play out wide, but I think you can't have two number 10s. And let tell you what, I'll turn it on you two. You had Mackay Steven. Obviously, you, you look at the way he's played this season, minus the last two games he's played. Who would you rather have at your number 10? <laughs> Neither of them. But yeah, that, exactly. Though, that's the point. It's such a difficult thing. I'd keep him, though. I think there's still something there. I'd, I'd personally get rid of him. Because it's just, I did, again, much like GMS, I didn't want me to resign. I, don't, I just don't think he can cut it as a starter in the Premiership. Mainly, and again, I don't actually think it's his fault. I think it's because of his injuries that, because of his pace, the reason he works so well... I mean, Jimmy Walker never had a load of pace, but because he was young and he didn't have the injuries, he was able to kind of... He was direct. Plastic. Yeah, and really direct. I think that's, the reason he works so well off the bench is that he comes on 60 minutes in, so people are knackered, so he can... His lack He's got of that pace, lease of life. Yeah. He? His lack of pace doesn't seem so apparent because everybody else around him is having to kind of play catch up. Whereas when he starts, he's on the exact same playing field as everybody else. So if everybody around him who's marking him is on it, he just gets lost. And I don't know how to fix that. Mm. You pair at opposite ends of the fence and I'm slap bang in the middle of the fence. Yeah. And I think that's quite a good summary of how Hearts fans in large feel yeah. about Jamie Walker. Um, however, we then move on to a guy who we know is away, as we said, Craig Whiten played 13 games, six goals, two assists, points per game of 2.3. Would you, Adam, obviously we know that me and Cammy would have kept him, would you? Yeah, I think I think we would have. Or sorry, I would have, because I still believe that we're a wee bit light in that area. Um, particularly if one of Big Nando or Boyce gets injured, then it's only really Ewan Henderson, as yeah. has been proven in recent matches, and nobody else. So, yeah. For, for that reason alone, I would have kept. Um, so it'd be interesting to see what centre-forwards, you know, with terrible goal tallies that were linked within the summer, 
and then no. tallies that get even worse once they pull on that moon right. shirt. Exactly. Am I not right to say Martin Waghorn has been linked to us? Oh, but no. Oh my God. Right. Yeah. Adam and me are very different on the opinion <laughs> on Martin Waghorn, but we we might speak about that right at the very end. However, you mentioned them, Adam. Armand Andwale came in in January, has played 14 games, scored five, set up four, should actually have six because our goal was wrongly chalked out. Uh, his points per game is 1.86. How do you feel, Cameron, about Nandwale? Obviously, you said you feel he's actually, like, you're not that bothered about his goal. Obviously, he's got a respectable yeah. goal, like nine goal contributions in 14 games for someone who came in in January and didn't have a preseason at all. That's very respectable, but you aren't even that bored about it because of, he's a very much a focal point that we can build about. Yeah, listen, I've probably sold him a little bit short earlier on, um, on reflection, but it's a handful. Mm-hmm. He really is. I can't wait to see him. So there's my answer, yes, we keep him. Yeah. Because I can't wait to see him up against, you know, the likes of like Jason Kerr or somebody who he can actually have a tussle with I'm just hoping that he's not going to end up being like Uchi and just throwing himself to the floor and just not getting anything don't think he's going to be um, but I just hope that there's there's something a little bit more from him but again I think it depends who we bring in to support up front if it's not Boise I th- obviously I've made my stance very very clear I think he's been great for us I think He's just offered something completely different. Adam, obviously, for the entire half of the season before the January transfer window was going, we need somebody to partner Boyce. And I think I actually said in the podcast where he arrived, I don't care if he doesn't score at all for us, as long as he offers us something different. Not only has he offered us something different, he's also been in the goals. Can't get can't get any better than that. Um, yeah, uh, a sign in that... We've both been crying out for it, and we'll both no doubt keep along with with Cam Dog. So yeah, another three out of three in that respect. Absolutely. Next, the we're down to the final three players now. One who's interesting because, by all accounts, we're looking to get him on a permanent deal. We're looking to actually keep him. Um, a player in Josh Janelli, who of course, sadly, only played nine games for us, but is a testament to how well he played in those nine games that fans have been crying out from all the time since he's been hurt. Of course, he got hurt in that away game at Wraith for four, um, in the 4-0 win, and he's not featured since. Played nine, scored three, set up one. Average points per game of 2.67. So one of the highest in terms of who can who has actually played a decent amount of games and won. Adam, a lot of people are going, oh, well, he's too injury prone. We shouldn't take a risk. However, considering he's out of contract and say we offer him an 18-month deal, would you take that risk? Um, yeah, I, I mean, I, don't get me wrong, I understand folks' scepticism um, with regards to injuries given you know, the history that we've got within the squad. Um, but yeah, why not? Because ultimately he's an upgrade on, on anything that we've currently got contracted to the club. So yeah. I mean, I mean, the beauty of a short-term deal is, you know, it's not a case of Lloyd Demur where he's sort of lingering in the background for however many years. So, why not? Cami, are you similar or are you not wanting to take that risk? Yeah, no, I'm very much the same, um, same boat. I think the difference for me is we signed Eddie White after I'm not playing in two years because of injury. We've seen what this guy can do. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that's a, a huge kind of positive. I like him. Um, I just hope that the injury he's got hasn't hampered him. But, you know, obviously we won't know. But no, I'd, I'd give him, I think you're right, an 18 month contract just to kind of pick himself up. And I think he, he can see, obviously, a lot of people come out and say, oh, players only do things on social media for the sake of it. But you could genuinely tell that he was gutted about not being able to play for us again. So hopefully he. He comes back, but again, it's another one that's gone awfully quiet. I think you'll be surprised as well if he does sign on when we get fans back. Just how good Tyne Castle can be as well. Yeah, Fair. which yeah. which is which is going to, bound to be a big you know pull of factor with the boys that have played at Tiny, telling those that haven't what it's going to be like and how hard it can be. Yeah, well, that <laughs> is a perfect segue to the man, the second last player who. 
I, I don't need to have this conversation, but we have to just to fill out the squad. Jervain Castanier came in, and I cannot imagine what he would have been like in a full-time castle with the performances he had. Played seven games, no goals, one assist. I can't even remember that one assist. I can. Who was, was it not the unintentional oh, he, back heel? Yeah, like he clearly <laughs> should have scored, but he played it backwards to Walker. Yes, it is that one. Sorry. I hey, didn't really knowledge. give him that. Hey. I, that doesn't even count. I didn't yes, it does. That. that is genius. He has officially the lowest points per game in 1.4, <laughs> which I think yeah. is actually quite a perfect summary of his time at Hearts. Are we all agreed he's been the worst player this season and that we wouldn't keep him? Without a doubt. Yeah, again, sorry it hasn't worked, but cheers for your time, all the best. I think it's can't believe the career he's had. Can it's just... unbelievable. It's unbelievable. It's actually mad. Like, and he had if... the goal to go, I want to emulate Mark De Vries when I come here. That That is one of the biggest cases of, you know, like football fraud I think I've ever seen. It's like I think Eric it's the one it... ah, I was going to say exactly yeah. that. <laughs> Exactly that. <laughs> Just inexplicably keeps going up and up and up the football ladder. Um, I mean, I th- it says everything that when it was announced, Coventry fans were like, I'll drive them up there myself. That's never a good sign, is it? No, no, absolutely not. Finally, last player, Ewan Henderson. He will, of course, be here next season. However, played 15 games for most of that. It was very much the tale of Ewan Henderson where he doesn't really do much. He shows a couple of flashes, but then in the last few games, he's really come on to our game. Got three goals, two assists. His points per game is 1.8, but particularly in the last kind of three or four games, he's really shown all this promise that we hear about him. The biggest question I've got for you guys, I'll start with you, Adam, is he's 20 now. He'll be 21 this year. Is he at the level where he needs to... It's not another situation where we can put him out on loan again. He needs to either be good enough to play in the first team or we need to say... He has to go. Um, or do you think we could go out on loan again and see what happens? I, I I still think there could be another wee loan move in him, but I, I feel as though he's determined to sort of prove that he's worthy of a place at Hearts. Mm-hmm. I get that impression from him. So, you know, it'd be interesting to see, obviously, who comes in in our attacking areas in the summer, whether he will, you know, sort of be um, in contention, if you like. Um, so... We just have to wait and see. But again, not overly fussed if he has to go out on loan and, and prove his worth. Cammy, how do you feel about it? I like Hendo. I, I really do. I think, like you say, there's there's kind of flashes about him. But when there are, it, it seems like he really wants to play for the club. Um, and fair play for running however many body yards it was and yeah. winning the penalty. Like, Jesus, mate. Like, Cam doing. I think that's really funny because I think at the time I'm sitting going, please don't fuck this, please don't fuck this. And I'm thinking as soon as I've seen the tackle, like he's going down there because he's he's never stopping in time for one. But I like him. Again, he's another player that he was under Stendhal quite a bit, was he not? Or yeah, was, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um again, I think a lot of it's confidence. A lot of he's 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 now kind of got that fire back in his belly. I like him, I really do. I, I think he'll be um, I'm not going to say he's going to be a, a first team starter a lot next season, but I think he's going to be placed on record again for a hat trick return on this podcast. But I think he'll play the breakthrough player at some point. Interesting. I've made it quite clear that for most of the time with you and Henson, I'll be very unimpressed. Um, I've not really seen what a lot of people see. However, much like Gary McKay Stephen, I cannot just disregard the last few games where he has been one of our best players. And if if he's going to be like that most of the time he plays, and I don't even mean popping up with goals and assists, just the general play he's been doing. Just being a nuisance, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I'd be more than happy to have him. So that is officially the season review done. It's also officially our longest podcast ever. Um, by a distance. By a distance. <laughs> However, it was always going to happen because we've got to review 27 games and 30 players or something like that. However, Cami, massive thank you for coming back on uh, to review everything. Oh, I've enjoyed it. It's been good. I just hope I've not lost many Twitter followers during the, <laughs> the space of the past, what feels like nine hours. Yeah, exactly. Um, so, yeah, 
massive thank you everybody for listening we are Perth to Paisley you can get us on everything at Perth to Paisley we're on YouTube as well and all good podcast platforms please leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice it massively helps please use the algorithms all that kind of stuff Adam where can people get you on Twitter they can get me on Twitter and all the socials at Adam T. Kendall I just want to say if you're still listening I mean fair fucks to you that's <laughs> that's some effort absolutely what about you mate I am at dmcaiver22. Cami, where can people get you as well? So I'm a very generic radio Twitter handle, so you can get me at Radio Cami on Twitter. Absolutely. So massive thank you for listening. We'll be back soon. We'll see you all next time. What is JTs?